Aloha everyone, welcome back to Kaimana Conservation, the channel where we talk about the ocean and everything ocean related. For those of you guys that haven't been here before, my name is Jessica. I'm a marine biologist that lives on Maui in the Hawaiian Islands. And today we're gonna to be talking about something very important, near and dear to my heart, because Maui County, for the first time ever, has created an ordinance on mineral sunscreens. Hi guys, so excited to be doing another speaking video with you. Um, I haven't done one in a while, so hopefully I'll remember all my lines. I'm currently set up on the beach down at McKenna State Park, also locally known as Big Beach. You'll notice, probably, because I've got bird sounds around me, we also have the sound of crashing waves. You might have heard that in the background just now, but I thought that it was the best place to talk to you guys about ocean conservation and some of the latest things that have been going on here in Maui. Maui County, as of October 1st, has just passed for the first time ever a new ordinance it's ordinance 5306 on the ban of chemical sunscreens what this means is that there is absolutely no sale distribution or use of any chemical sunscreens of any kind here throughout the entire county of Maui so that's Maui Nui or Maui Island that's Lanai and Molokai all three of those islands you're only able to use mineral reef safe sunscreen we're very excited this is a new headway it's never been done before and we're very proud that it started here in Maui first and hopefully uh, as time goes on and as the rest of the state sees how well we're doing with it they'll expand it to being a new state law now if you don't know the difference a chemical sunscreen is the type of sunscreen that is meant to absorb the sun's UV rays and convert it into heat whereas a physical sunscreen is meant to literally block your skin from the sun it's actually acting as a reflector little history lesson for you before we continue some of you might be thinking I've heard of sunscreens in Hawaii's news before and you're not wrong back in 2018 there was a law passed through Hawaiian legislature that prohibited the sale and distribution of the top two most toxic chemicals in chemical sunscreen after that law passed no stores in the entire state of Hawaii was allowed to sell chemical sunscreens that contained those two ingredients now the caveat with that is that there are over 12 ingredients that are considered detrimental to the lifespan growth and fertility of corals and they only removed the top two so it was a really good step but there was so much more work to be done in addition to that it was only the sale and distribution on island that was limited it didn't prevent people who were purchasing their sunscreens off island before coming here from using them once they got to the beach which is half of the point really is to prevent people from wearing bad sunscreens and taking that into the water with them so with this new ordinance not only are we prohibiting more toxic sunscreens but we are also going to be preventing people from taking those toxic sunscreens that they might be purchasing elsewhere and walking them straight into the water with it so the next question I oftentimes get is why should we care? Why is it such a big deal about what kind of sunscreen I choose to put on my body? Huge deal, I'm really glad you asked. Um, first and foremost, as a marine biologist, ocean conservation is my primary motivator. One of my goals out here is to protect the coral reefs of Maui and of the greater Hawaii island chain for future generations to enjoy, both here on Maui as well as our visitors who love to come and enjoy it with us. When we wear chemical sunscreens into our oceans, it comes off of our body and will adhere itself to other parts of our ocean ecosystem, specifically our corals. Corals are a major victim of the sunscreens that we put in our water. They are very sensitive creatures and if anything changes in their water chemistry, whether that be climate change, uh, pollution from land, or pollution that we bring in on our own bodies, and it can cause what's called coral bleaching. If a coral bleaches, that's like a coral catching a fever. It's sick, it loses all of its zooxanthellae, which is a symbiotic algae, that lives inside of its tissues and then if those corals are not able to reabsorb the zooxanthellae before that stressor alleviates it can have a mortality event and if we can't protect our corals which are the foundation of the ecosystem we have out here then what are we going to have left for the next generations there are several scientific studies that show that chemical sunscreens act as an endocrine disruptor 
Now, that might be a scientific term you've never heard of before, that's okay. Endocrine is a word for a system in our body that regulates our hormones, um, and there are obviously hormones in all living things, including our corals. So an endocrine disruptor is something that disrupts the endocrine system. All you have to imagine is a puzzle piece. If you have a puzzle piece, obviously, it's got a specific shape, and only specific other puzzle pieces will fit into that puzzle piece perfectly. Now, in a natural environment, the endocrine system is going to be picking up natural hormones, which will fit into that puzzle piece. An endocrine disruptor is something that mimics the same shape of puzzle piece and will block off the endocrine system and it prevents it from getting what it actually needs, which are the hormones and the natural chemicals. In a coral, they act as growth inhibitors, meaning it prevents our corals from growing, and that also is in, uh, a cause of infertility, meaning that it prevents our corals from spawning or creating new life on our reef. So it's efficiently just stunted the growth and the development of our coral reefs as a whole. Marine animals like corals can be directly or indirectly impacted by chemical sunscreen toxins. If you are a direct impact, that would be the same thing as putting on sunscreen, walking straight into the water before it's even dried, and that sunscreen will come off of your body in the salt water and then attach to the coral. Alternatively, you can still indirectly impact the marine life by wearing sunscreen, even if you never set foot in the water. I get a lot of questions from fishermen who never walk into the water, from people who are just going for a jog, or if they're just sunbathing on the beach, they're like, why should it matter? I'm not actually going into the water. The thing is though, is those chemicals are still going to end up in the water, even if it takes a longer route to get there. If you're on the beach, for example, all those chemicals that are on your skin might wash off onto the sand. The next high tide is going to bring those chemicals back into the water with it. Let's say even farther, what if you're going for a jog at the local beach park and you never even come within 100 meters of the beach? still doesn't matter it means you're gonna go home you're gonna take a shower all of those chemicals are gonna get washed off your body down the drain and as we know from our favorite documentary Finding Nemo all drains lead to the ocean and last but not least how do you know if you're abiding by this new ordinance I think that's the one thing that most people ask me about and it's a super important question that shows to me that everybody really is trying it's just very confusing to tell the difference between a chemical sunscreen versus a physical or a mineral sunscreen um, my big trick if you flip that bottle over and you look at the ingredients list if it takes a chemistry major in order to read half of the ingredients on the list then chances are it is a chemical sunscreen so the easier way to tell is look for the two ingredients that are in a mineral sunscreen so the chemicals you want to be in that sunscreen and that is zinc and titanium so those are the two ingredients you want to look for in a mineral sunscreen but if there's a huge long list of like three or four syllable words in that ingredients list you're looking at a chemical sunscreen and you need to put it back and if you want to protect the ocean and you're not sure about sunscreens or if you just want to take it that extra step you can always just cover up hats sunglasses gaiters uh, long sleeve rash guards swim tights and socks um, all of those things are really great ways to protect your skin from the sun while simultaneously protecting the ocean and its inhabitants. Alrighty guys, that's about it for me today. I hope you guys learned a little bit about corals, about sunscreens, and about why I am so proud of Maui County for taking this big step forward into protecting our coral reefs for future generations. If you have any extra questions, because I know I most certainly did not hit all of the topics relevant to chemical sunscreens, if you have any questions, comments, feel free to put them in the box below. I want to make sure that everybody who walks on our beaches and swims in our ocean is as educated as I am and can make the right decisions to protect our world and our planet and our oceans. So uh, thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope you learned and I will see you around next time. Mahalo everyone.